All right, welcome, happy solstice, um, or whenever you're joining this uh, recording. And uh, some of us are practicing with a candle, I have a candle here. Um, I have to keep the room kind of bright for, for um, the recording purposes, but if you would like to uh, darken your room or light candles, um, in to honor this uh, winter solstice, uh, you might like to do that. <clears throat> winter solstice, as you may know, uh, is the longest night of um, of the year, and and then the beginning of the return of the light of when each day gets a little bit brighter um, as we move towards the next season. And uh, I'm not sure why my why things lean towards this direction, but but they did and I I followed. So um, the topic tonight, the theme of this solstice offering is hope. <clears throat> um, I don't like to <laughs> it gets a bit tricky with the metaphors of darkness and light uh, yeah. so I don't like to lean too heavily into one being better than the other because of course we need both and they're both both whatever metaphor you want to read into darkness and light uh, have important places and um, both those energies are very important um yeah so i was curious about i don't i still don't quite know how this thread picked up for me but anyways uh when i started thinking about hope in in the context of the dharma or the teachings of the buddha um it's not something that i've heard referenced very often and took a bit of digging to find out what you know how this is referred to and um there's many different words that are kind of in, in, translated or can be translated as hope and <clears throat> i won't get into uh, too much into these different poly words uh yeah, because there's several different threads, but uh, the one that I am going to talk about is is Asamsa, A-S-A-M-S-A, -S -A -S -A, Asamsa, and I, I, there's actually a sutta on hope, <laughs> which is, kind of blew me away because it's a tricky in in many of the suttas where it's referenced in different cases it it, it it depends on the flavor it depends on how it's leaning that uh it, it can be it, in the suttas i was reading it it was uh often talked about kind of in the negative when it's a longing a hope that's like a longing has a you know, you can feel the clinging in that, right? When you say longing, there's like, ah, I want that. And uh, I hope I get that. Um, and so in there, we can feel that there's some attachment. There's there's some clinging, uh, often to a sense pleasure, but it can come in, in many infinite forms. And so this is usually a unskillful representation uh unskillful that's not the right word uh manifestation of of hope when it's a has has a some flavor of clinging to it but in the in the positive there's many other references of hope in terms of um the aspiration for freedom 
for freedom from suffering. Well, in, even in the Four Noble Truths, we, there's hope in the Four Noble Truths. There is suffering. There's a cause for suffering. It's possible for the ending of suffering. And there's a way, the path to the ending of suffering. That's pretty hopeful to me. It's like, oh, that's possible. And there's a way. It's, I mean, the word hope isn't in those Four Noble Truths, but it has a flavor, hope flavor. Um, there's also references of hope in terms of merit, which is a whole other topic. But um, the aspiration, the hope of accumulating good merit um, that's forward leading, onward leading, <clears throat> another whole topic. Uh, so tonight, uh, this is from the, for those, you don't need to, you don't need to know this or reference it, but some people like to, and so I'm just mentioning it for people that like to know this. This is from the Anguta Nikaya um, 3.13. 3.13 of the Anguta, Angut, Anguttara Nikaya, yes. Um, that means the numerical discourses. And uh, this one's actually called the Asamsa Sutta. Asamsa meaning hope. Or it's also defined as expectation or wish. And um, yeah, let me see if this segue fits. Um, yeah, so another aspect of hope is sada or faith and um i've referenced this book many times before but the book uh, faith by sharon salzberg is a fabulous book trusting your own deepest experience is the subtitle and so faith in these teachings in this practice is um distinguishes between blind faith where one has faith in something because they're told to, or um, yeah, all the different ways that that can come about. And then um, there, what what is referenced here is verified faith, which is akin to trust, trusting what you directly experienced, trusting teachers that you trust that you know are or are trustworthy um <clears throat> and uh that's related to hope in that it's not blind hope or uh longing hope uh, hope with clinging but it's uh oh, um a hope related to what is possible <laughs> and uh, a sense of trust in the teachings trust in in your own experience so um there's two different translations of this sutta um that i'm looking at bhikkhu bodhis and bhikkhu sujatsus and I'm mostly just going to focus on this second half of the this sutta. And in this teaching, um, they say there's three kinds of persons in this world. Three three kinds of persons found existing in the world. There are those what three? Um, in one translation, it says the hopeless, the hopeful. And the one who has done away with hope. Hopeless, hopeful, and the one who has done away with hope. Um, Bhikkhu Bodhi says it this way. There is the one without expectation. That's a hope, hopeless, without expectation. One full of expectation is hopeful. And the one who has overcome expectation 
in the other other translation uh, was has done away with hope. So it's interesting. Translations make such a, a huge difference. Um, I like this word, um, these descriptions. And okay, so let let's talk about what these are. Um, so a hopeless person or somebody without expectation. And so they just they I'll try to kind of cross reference these two and include their different descriptions. So this is a hopeless person is someone who is unethical, immoral. Um, they, they use the phrase bad, bad character, um, secretive in their actions. They're um, corrupt, underhanded. These are some of the different descriptions. And um, they are not a spiritual practitioner, even though they're claiming to be one. So they're presenting themselves as being a, a mendicant or a, um, a person that's being supported by alms, by donations. And they're they're presenting themselves as being a spiritual person in the world and but really their character their morals their ethics their behaviors their actions are not conducive to that and so um so now we have this person we'll just say uh an unethical person and they hear Oh, so and so, another bhikkhu, another person who's um, a renunciate, who's living this uh, life, claiming you know to be a spiritual person, um, has destroyed the taints, the taints or the um, defilements of greed, hatred, and delusion. In short, so this person they hear about somebody else who that has has achieved the destruction of greed, hatred, and delusion, they have realized for themselves with direct knowledge, again, that's verified faith, direct knowledge, in this very life, the um, freedom of heart, or another translation, the, the free of defilements, liberation of the mind, liberation by wisdom, insight, clear seeing and knowing and having entered upon that wisdom and clear seeing they dwell in it so the first person who's uh, unethical in short hears about someone else who's achieved this freedom liberation and um, it doesn't occur to the unethical person when when will I too, with the destruction of the taints, realize for myself with direct knowledge in this very life, the taintless liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, and having entered upon it, dwell in it? They they know <laughs> that is not possible for them because they're living an unethical way and. So this is what is considered a person, a hopeless person, a person without hope, a person without expectation. It's like what, I don't know if you've had this experience, hopefully it's not just me, but if you've ever done something unethical or you've been cruel in your speech or um, doing something hateful or... Mm, greed or stealing or taking more than is freely given it disturbs our mind so much we can't meditate because we know that was crappy <laughs> we know and so we don't we 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 know it's not possible unless we begin you know with the foundation of our precepts with the foundation of our intention to not do harm etc 
So I hope that makes some sense. This is a person that is considered hopeless. Okay, and so what is a hopeful person? So this is somebody who's a, someone on the path, a practitioner, a student, they, they use the word a bhikkhu, who is virtuous and of good character. So someone who's living by the precepts, who, who, um, by their ethical foundation, in their thought, speech, actions. Um, did I forget anything there? Maybe not. Uh, and so then they also hear about this person. So and so, this other bhikkhu has destroyed greed, has achieved the destruction of greed, hatred, and delusion, has realized with direct knowledge in this very life, this freedom of mind, of, of liberation of heart through wisdom, and having entered upon that, dwells in it. And they hear about them, and that it occurs to them, oh, when will I too have this destruction of the taints or the, the defilements? And, um, you know, fill in the rest of that paragraph. And this is called a person who is hopeful, who is full of expectation, because they're on the path. They're practicing. They're following wise intention and wise speech and wise action and wise concentration and mindfulness, et cetera, the whole Eightfold Path. Um, this is a hopeful person. And you can hear, perhaps, in that description, <laughs> it's not the hope that is full of clinging, uh, longing. It's just like, oh, When's that going to happen? <laughs> it's uh, it's this is a um, if it, it feels possible, maybe not in this lifetime, but it's like they're practicing with this intention. Um, and then lastly, the person who has done away with hope is someone who's called an arahant, one who's completely destroyed these taints of greed, hatred, and delusion um, completely and um, permanently, not just temporarily. And um, they hear also about one who has <clears throat> realized with direct knowledge and um, this freedom and and they, it does not occur to them when will when will I, because they have also attained that freedom of heart and mind, that peace, and so this is one who has. Uh, there's different phrasings of it. One who has uh, done away with hope in this translation, and in another, one who has overcome expectation. So they don't have that longing that expectation that hope because they it's already completed <clears throat> that's an interesting I, I won't get the words accurately uh, but somebody was sharing before we came on the recording about uh, well working with cancer patients and and the importance of uh, how hope can arise for folks, even in what feels like dire situations, when their expectations or hopes align with what is possible. And this, to me, really resonates with this sutta, this teaching. What feels, what is aligning with what is possible, you know, when one is li living and working on the path and um with all these wise intentions that's possible and when when we're racked with um you know shame and guilt and uh secretiveness and uh unethical behaviors oh i missed this part they also are not celibate though claiming to be one that's the um the hopeless person <laughs> Like, wow. Um, 
Yeah, they use pretty strong language. Inwardly rotten, corrupt, depraved. It's like, yeah. So this is the, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not aligned with what is is possible. That being said, well, we can't go there. But Angulimala comes to mind, who was a mass murderer in in the in the suttas and uh also became enlightened so there's hope <laughs> even for the hopeless <laughs> uh, yeah so I, I i do find it helpful at this time of solstice and the returning of the light because it yeah like i sit with a a seasonal uh light every morning you know those seasonal affective disorder lights and take vitamin d and stuff because a lot of um darkness and lack of sun can have a strong effect on lots of us so i do feel that sense of mm, leaning towards the light or hopefulness of of uh the return of the sun and longer days uh, so I guess that's probably how this theme came up for me. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say. That was probably a lot. <clears throat> okay, it is. That's all. <laughs> Let's get ready to practice. If you like to dim your lights and and really feel the sense of darkness and maybe have a candle. Um, Take a take a moment to do that. <clears throat> and uh, so I might uh, begin by chanting tonight. Don't often do that here, but uh, I'm feeling it because. Chanting our precepts, which I was talking about, this kind of our ethical value foundation, um, and also chanting the refuges, where we take refuge and feel a sense of safe harbor in the teachings of the Buddha, of our own possibility of awakening our Buddha nature, if you will. Um, and our refuge, our sense of home in the teachings, in the Dharma, and especially in community, Sangha. The, these are the three of the trip, triple gem. Sangha community is, um, Thich Nhat Hanh said that Sangha is the next Buddha, apparently. I didn't hear him say it, but so I'm told. <clears throat> So hmm, I'll chant these in Pali, and uh, which is the language that teachings were first written down in, as far as we know, and then I'll say them in English so you'll know what it was I was saying. <clears throat> So you can just, uh, you're, you're welcome if you know these to chant along with me. I could have done a screen share if I thought ahead, but that's not how it rolls. And, uh, or you can just let these vibrations, these intentions uh, roll through and over our hearts and minds. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato 
Sama Sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Completely Self-Awakened One. Uttang Saranangachami, Damang Saranangachami, Sangang Saranangachami, Lutiampi Buddhang Saranangachami, Lutiampi Damang Saranangachami, Dutiampi Sangang Saranangachami Tatiampi Buddhang Saranangachami Tatiampi Dhammang Saranangachami Tatiampi Sangang Saranangachami I go to the Buddha as a refuge. I go to the Dhamma as refuge. I go to the Sangha as refuge. I do this a second time and a third time. And the five precepts. Anatipata veramani sikapadang samadhyami adina dana where am I? Sika padang samadhyami. Kame su micha charya. Where am I? Sika padang samadhyami. Musawada. Where am I? Sika padang samadhyami. Sura. Sura Mirya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami. I undertake the training to refrain from the destruction of life. I undertake the training to refrain from taking that which is not freely given. I undertake the training to refrain from misconduct in the area of sensual desires. I undertake the training to refrain from speaking falsely. And I undertake the training to refrain from intoxication, which leads to carelessness. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And so as we let these vibrations and intentions touch our hearts and minds and inspire us, inspire us with hope, with intention, that this is possible for us. We are on the path. We have these intentions to train to be not causing harm, to be not taking what isn't given, to be not lying or speaking falsely or causing harm from carelessness and intoxication. And there may be other intentions that you have that guide your life. So you could take some time here to reflect and include your own ethical foundations.
Allowing yourself to feel inspired, brightened by your own good character. So that when we hear of these inspirations of the Buddha and others who have realized the destruction of greed, hatred, and delusion, the complete liberation of heart and mind through wisdom, we feel hopeful. This too is possible. And we can reflect also on what you take refuge in. The chant was refuge in Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Refuge in awakened beings, in the teachings of awakening, and the community of beings practicing for awakening. But there may be other things, other, other things that you take refuge in, perhaps in the teachings of nature, as some mentioned in our conversation, the teachings of children, teachings of love, trust. What do you take refuge in? And hope here, similarly to faith, is effort is required. It's not blind faith or blind hope or um, hope with, with clinging. But it's hope that has a action, which brings us to the path. Hope is both a feeling and a plan, an intention and an action. Mm -hmm. 
And so now as much as is available to you, connect with the sensations of hope. How does that feel in the body? Is there a brightening quality or uplifting or enlivening? And if you can <clears throat> connect with the sensations in the body in the present moment as we reflect on this hope, you could just rest with that sensation, knowing it, allowing it. And if you, if you choose, if you find it supportive and helpful, you could add some phrases similar to mudita, uh, resonant joy phrases. May this, may this hope flourish. May this hope be supported by wise actions. May I know the destruction of greed, hatred, and delusion. And if you're one who is feeling hopeless, perhaps a compassionate phrase or may I feel hopeful, may I connect with what is hopeful in my heart and mind. May this state of heart and mind continue to grow and deepen.
Then you might like to bring into awareness, into heart mind, uh, somebody who is suffering or having difficulty or feeling a lack of inspiration and hope. And allow your awareness to connect with them with these in your own words. May you connect with hope. May you feel the possibility of peace. When you have experiences of hope, may you dwell in them. Feeling within yourself your own hope for others. The possibility, the aspiration, the expectation, the hopefulness. And then bringing into heart-mind awareness, um, perhaps someone that does feel hopeful to you or um, feels like they're on the path to freedom, to, to this direct knowledge, and wishing that that grows for them. May that deepen. May you dwell in that hopefulness, may you dwell in that liberation. May you become one who has overcome or surpassed this, this need for hope because it's been attained. And then on this evening of solstice practice, we incline our heart-mind awareness in these times of darkness, these times of great sorrow and despair and suffering in the world. And we allow this inner light to move forward into this darkness with our heart's deepest wish for all beings, all beings everywhere. 
near and far, seen and unseen, born and yet to be born. Friends and difficult beings. All the beings of the earth, two-legged, four-legged, many-legged, winged and finned, the earth itself, feeling that it's possible for us and it's possible for all beings. May all beings know the destruction, the ending of the defilements, realizing them with direct knowledge in this very life. The undefiled liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, May I, may you, may all beings everywhere realize freedom of heart and mind in this very life. So thank you for joining us on the recording and practicing with us whenever you have. Um, wishing, wishing you um, hope. <laughs> and uh, we won't be on the recording next week um, because it's uh, day before the New Year's retreat begins. Um, but we'll be back in, oh, it's the first time saying it, 2023. Um, yeah, so um, see you then. Thanks for joining us tonight.